Welcome everybody to Rad Pod and Chill. I'm Heidi Kuda, and I'm here with my buddies Hi Fi and Jim Stewartson. And Yo. if my if my video looks shitty, it's because it always does. And Hi Fi told me to embrace the suck, and that's what I'm gonna do tonight. I'm just not gonna care. Someday, someday it'll it'll look better. Uh, but you guys aren't here for that. You're here for some uh, dope ass content. We hope to deliver. We're gonna be recapping some. Really we important episodes. We do. Yeah, we got we got Zarina and Paul live from Harrison. We've got Michael McKay. We got uh, uh, Hi-Fi's video clip. But what we don't have for you tonight, it is my commitment to you for coming back after last week. We are not going to be talking about big junk turlets. <laughs> or bidets. You bidets just did that, off the menu. <laughs> no, 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 and what I'm saying Literally is, no one would have remembered that we oh, talked yeah. about oh, yeah. the I'm... giant <laughs> junk toilet seat. Okay. That okay. that the that that the acting attorney general of the United States invented as his only claim to fame was a turlet for, for guys with gigantic ding dongs. <laughs> the best part was when. Because it because it swings, you see, it swings and it hits it, it hits it. You got it here. So okay, gentlemen. Show in the toilet. It can only get better. Thank you, High Fidelity. So, High Fidelity, you have some news on your mind. Why don't you fill in our viewers? Yes, we folks. I think this is very important. We need to talk about voter fraud and the 2020 election. That's right. You mean it was stolen? No, no. <laughs> okay, just checking. I mean, even with them cheating, mm. Biden still won. But this one's funny because this dork right here, Republican official, he was the vice chairman <laughs> of the Georgia GOP. The first vice chairman, Brian Pritchard. See his name right there? Brian Pritchard. Yeah, he voted nine times. I nine. Hope you didn't find the nine votes that I've. <laughs> Can you? I just. I don't even. Whatever, man. So yeah, voter fraud. Um, and no, this isn't the voter fraud down in the villages where multiple people voted multiple times for Donald Trump. No, 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 no. This is Georgia, okay. where apparently. Trump needed 11,879 votes minus this guy. Well, right. I mean, it would have been more, right? It would have been nine more. Except yeah. For, except for yeah. this guy. So my, so my feeling is that now that he's been exposed, uh, surely he's going to run for Congress. You know, I mean, there is no bottom. There's no bottom. No bottom. Oh, he's a he's a warrior. Yeah, that makes him a... Uh, you see, oh. that's how it works when, mm. when you know, they'll accuse us of doing it and when they do it. It's sort of like, you know, how all, how Hillary Clinton is actually running the uh, pedophile child trafficking ring as opposed to, oh, oh, oh. I don't know, Jeffrey Epstein or Trump models or... Or, right? Diddy. or, or what Diddy. about the... Uh, the Diddy. what about no what Diddy. about what about the dozens and the dozens of Southern Baptist leaders who have been charged and incarcerated for I also offenses. need I also need to point out the two-tier system of justice. So we're starting with voter fraud and we got to talk about our two-tiered system of justice in this country because that fellow that I was just speaking about uh Mr. Pritchard there, he got fined $5,000 and he had some probation and some you know whatever. But I would remind everyone that this woman here yeah. Crystal Mason. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. got sentenced to five years. Yeah. But she got to quit it, so that's cool. Yeah. But uh, you want to talk about a two tiers? Uh, what? Yeah. Why are old white men getting away with bullshit? Why did Donald Trump's fine go from like five hundred million to one hundred seventy-five million? You want to talk about two tier system of justice? Yeah. Old white dudes get preferential treatment. Period. End of goddamn story. Okay, I just want to point out that High Fidelity has never opened launching into his TED Talk. He's usually rolling a joint, slowly getting ready for the show, cutting We're some clips. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, and uh, I'm glad that you're uh, paying attention. 
Jim, you have some stuff on your mind too. Can we hear what's uh, going on in uh, the Jim Stewart's inside of the internet? <laughs> um. Well, I mean, the the sort of astonishing thing is just just it's like they're they're trying to prove all the points all at once as hard as they can yeah just to 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 prove that no one will pay any attention yeah. it's it's incredible like the, so you know we had this whole like black swans been trending all over the fucking universe for for days now right and and i'll give you one reason mike flynn Dude, since last August, has been pushing that meme into the universe every single time the motherfucker gets on anything. And it, he got that thing going um, in, in August. And for progressively over time, it has gotten more and more um, sort of embedded in people's minds and then all of a sudden the thing goes bonkers because of of baltimore flynn has the most viral tweet on the on the planet about it and everybody totally fucking misses it everybody misses it the one place that that wrote about flynn at all used a disinformation agent as their source oh my god it's a fucking mess Wow. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, 20, 2024, um, it's fucking 2024. And, but, but anyway, here's how, how insane it is. Flynn went on uh, his Patriot TV network and endorsed Scott Ritter mm. twice convicted pedophile yeah. who lives and this is important in Russia. Yeah. Because he fucking defected to Russia. So here's what happened. Scott Ritter signed a, a letter with a list of Russian assets, ex-military Russian, Russian assets, saying, trying to pressure Macron, trying to pressure France from moving troops to help Ukraine as part of NATO. And so Scott Ritter got on fucking uh, on, on one of these Russian propaganda shows and had a hysterical meltdown wow. about how there was going to be nuclear war, wow. like full, like hair on fire, batshit crazy. It's on automatic people, nuclear total annihilation, right? All because Macron is is gonna move some troops over towards Ukraine because fuck, because the wow. United States is falling asleep uh, or getting psyops more precisely. Um. Anyway, so it it, it it Scott Ritter, a defector in Russia, is threatening the United States with Vladimir Putin's nukes and 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 our ally. France is fucking attacking. He's threatening France with nuclear weapons, threatening literally to murder 60,000 NATO troops with nuclear weapons. That's what he's saying fucking out loud on the TV. And Mike Flynn gets up there and says, Lieutenant Scott Riddle, you need to take him very seriously. He's got a lot of experience in this in this world. This is a day after Flynn gets on, on his show and says, you know what? You really should listen to the FSB. If, I, if you don't know what the FSB is, that is the Russian CIA. The, the GRU is the Russian DIA, approximately, uh, and the FSB is the um, Russian CIA. And he said you should listen to them because they're telling you that Ukraine, the United States, and the United Kingdom are responsible for the terrorism in Moscow. 
Not fucking ISIS, even though ISIS is what Mike Flynn has been pretending to fight against for years and years. Even though ISIS fucking took credit, even though ISIS published videos from the fucking attackers, he wants he is taking the FSB's point of view that the United States, Ukraine, and UK are responsible. I'm, I'll give you one other detail. I won't go into too much detail, but he LARPed about this. He made conspiracy theories about this over top of murder, mass murder, live. No blurring, no nothing. Just a gunman murdering dozens of people on, on the screen. Talking about how you should listen to the FSB because the people committing these horrible traumatic crimes in front of your eyes that I'm not shielding you from at all, the are, are Ukraine and the United States, as opposed to Russia, just paying some fucking ISIS guys to come attack their own concert. I have questions. And so I'm landing. I'm landing. Um, point being, the the open. It's not collusion anymore it's not like some vague relationship they alex jones had vladimir solovyev the number one russian state media propagandist on his fucking show to do what to talk about black swans to talk about how the terrorism in fucking moscow was actually ukraine or maybe the United States and the UK and the CIA and MI6 or something, but definitely not us and definitely not fucking ISIS. The, the open, blatant, just foreign warfare that's going on in the nation uh, is, is becoming astonishing, just almost comical. One bit of good news and high five. You can clue. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the the. I'm gonna show you a video because I've never done that. Oh hi! Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. No, not that one. Ding dong. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be a way to relate that though. Psyops. You know, there'll be a way. No, the, this was this was the first time on corporate television that I've ever seen this topic appropriately discussed. And I'm not going to even talk about what it is. I would just like high five to play it. Um, it's uh, Miles Taylor, um, uh, former uh, national security uh, professional and um, Nicole Wallace, who is in my view, a national treasure. Right. I mean, look at these guys. They're going to put the cutouts out of work. These are Republicans. Yeah, we, I mean, we did not learn our lesson as a country in 2016, Nicole. And I think you're right to point out that it's actually worse than in that window. Because in that window, I think you had Donald Trump realizing that whether it was active or passive collusion with the Russians, that there was a beneficial relationship there. I think a lot of us wrongly thought that it was just one man with that crazy view and the Russians. Now we have a lot of folks within the Republican Party that were that are willingly abetting the Russian message and it's being amplified. It is remarkably effective right now. This campaign is working and, and make no mistake, it is a psyop. This psychological operation is being executed by a foreign adversary, being run by their intelligence services, and it's incredibly effective. I'm even more worried, though, that this is going to get amplified to a level that we haven't seen before because of technology this cycle. These reports mention increasing use of technological tools, and part of that are AI-powered tools that allow these tactics to be more believable and interactive. Now, if you go back to 2016, some of the things the Russians tried to do were really kind of amateur. You could tell it was not a native English speaker producing this content and so a discerning reader 
might not fall for some of their propaganda. Now they can deploy interactive AI powered bots online that feel like real accounts, that interact, that amplify things. And again, that seems to be working. And we're still months and months out from the election. There's a lot of ways this could manifest with technology that we haven't seen. Make no mistake, this is a psyop. This is a, psy a psychological operation being executed by foreign adversaries intelligence services. Fucking eject it into my veins. All we need is a lot more people explaining that and explaining it correctly in a way that, that doesn't scare people unnecessarily but makes very very clear what's going on and i was just blown away that somebody had the goddamn cajonas to fucking say that out loud on my tv so that was that, that is the 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 good news part of my ted talk which is now ended thank you okay. i gotta say some things i gotta say some things all right this is from four years ago four years ago Russia hired network of Britons to go after enemies of Putin. So they were pulling influence stuff four years ago. This was in the UK, right? And then uh, just yesterday in Czechoslovakia, Russians attempted to influence European elections. There's this whole network where Russians are feeding money to European politicians. Yeah, but this is, that's okay. These are active measures in Europe. Yes. Hold on. And then we got Poland, 10 hours ago, raided a Russian spy network, right? <clears throat> Why is America so stupid that they think it couldn't happen here? I they know what's understand. happening here. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that America is so stupid. I think that people have been waking up to the fact that it's happening here. But Jim, like you just pointed out, more of that, please. More of yeah. corporate media, which people actually still watch to tell people what's going on. And I have some comments. Uh, did you want to mention this before I get to my questions? Yes. This is something, and I'm going to put it in chat, and I'll probably put it in the comments later. This is something I highly suggest everyone read. Um, Dave Troy pointed this out. It's from the uh, Institute for the Study of War. Yeah, it is. It talks about exactly what Russia is doing globally and how we as people who enjoy democracy need to stand up to them and stop them. And I just I think it's something. Yeah, well, there's, a, there's, a great, there's a great chart in there um, that, that they've um, posted that that shows basically how Russia is turning us into Russia. Yeah. They have they have rush themes, right? And among those themes are Russia is unbeatable. That Ukraine is a lost that that's the one. Ukraine is a lost cause. All of these these pure Kremlin lines and this this chart does a, a really good job of of sort of showing the basic topology of of how this how this flows um it it's really um clever in in a way um but it's also now at this point the the propaganda is so coordinated from on every step of that chain you, nobody nobody's guessing anymore that's why miles i feel like finally has the you know the ability to say something like that is because you can't look actually look at what's happening and deny it anymore you just you. can't you can't have a ukraine flag in your fucking bio and not understand that there is a a psychological war going on and that people are getting um completely brainwashed by propaganda thank you i have so many comments i'm gonna just uh jump in um one thing is for any of our viewers who are new, a couple of episodes ago, we did a PowerPoint with Serena Zabriskie who had to, uh, who had to, was forced to study 
combat propaganda at Leningrad State University when she was getting her literature degree. It was mandatory. Please take an hour and watch that so you have a very clear understanding of how this works. Because once you learn how it works, you begin the process of being inoculated against this stuff and you're able to be helpful to other people in your life. That's number one. Number two, when the gentleman you just played talked about how a discerning eye in 2016 could have seen some of these shitty memes, I have to say, in meme warfare, it doesn't have to look good. If you're showing, if, if Russia is showing a picture of somebody who was a, um, a coal miner, and it says coal miners for, you know, Trump, it, it's not about a discerning eye. It's about what emotion that brings out. We know that was Russian propaganda. The coal miner's son said my father would have never backed a, a criminal like Trump. So I've been investigating the 2016 election. I've seen the memes. I know what he's talking about, but it doesn't have to be fabulous and fancy for it to be effective. And it's, and it's one of the things that I personally am uh, always distressed about in every fucking article I read about Cambridge Analytica or any of these attacks like the stuff that Hi-Fi just showed, there's always the boilerplate paragraph saying, we don't know that it had any influence. In fact, we think the influence may have been, you know, small. That's not the point. You don't need to have a massive amount of influence. You need to noodle the margins and you do that in meme warfare by pulling yeah. out the emotions. And so- I, I think Miles things. was. I think Miles was agreeing with that point. If you if you uh, listen to what he's saying, he's saying a lot of people thought mm -hmm. it was just that, right? It was just mm -hmm. these embarrassing sort of Ivan the Terrible who's mm -hmm. sitting in Saint Petersburg and making terrible memes, right? Like that 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 wasn't where the vast majority of the influence came. It was those those accounts and the and russian intelligence providing themes providing memes and absolutely americans americanizing it, uh, it they, they use the the local native population mm -hmm. right, to 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 do their propaganda sorry and, and i also get his point that it's going to be refined and it's ramping up and that's going to make it more yeah. complicated but if we were finland where we would inoculate our children against this from uh you know uh preschool on up that would not be as big of a scare because we see the techniques and we're able to understand them. Step, um, baby steps, one by one. At least, yeah. at least one person yeah. on TV said some of the right words. This and is good. This is yay. This is good. yeah. No, no, it, it's very good. But here's my uh, high fi I, I hear, I hear my, I hear my pals. I think that's cool though. Uh, yeah. I, Tell them I love them. Okay, so two things um, that I want to say based on uh, your first TED Talk, um, Jim. Uh, and I don't, I don't want you to have to add to your list of woes as you answer this, but I think it's important to point out many of the people that we investigate are aligned with people who are convicted pedophiles and convicted human traffickers. We're not making these themes up. This is a reality. And so it's concerning to me when a retired three star is trying to, you know, prop up somebody like Scott Ritter. Equally concerning is that that retired three star would try to prop up somebody like Andrew Tate. And I bring this up because Mike Johnson, fresh on my mind, because I've been investigating him. It's like throw a rock and you'll hit somebody in his orbit who is truly a dangerous uh, you know, out of court settling, uh, you know, uh, uh, I wish yeah. there was a, I wish there was a better word. They've tried to. It, predator. It, yes. Predator. Thank you. Thank you. And so it's, it's like, so, so that's my first question. Why? I mean, he, he was also connected to this guy who had a Pizzagate book. Oh, okay. Remember that? I mean, like, I, what I, what's really important, right, is that that um, yes, these themes of of things like pedophilia, of, of you know, of abusing kids, are absolutely projection. Yeah. Right. Like a cabal of of pedophiles, right? Like 
you literally have fucking Jeffrey Epstein and Donald Trump both trafficking underage kids. Yeah. Like, what, you know, Trump and all of, there's so much really weird fucking shit that went, that went on over there. And you don't even have to speculate to, to just see that everything that, that you've seen in Pizzagate, everything you've seen at QAnon is trying to take the real crimes and accusations and point them at someone else. And that is specifically- they pedo take pedophile and point it at Hillary Clinton. Right. And that's so all that's what it it's, is. It's all called it. it's called Jason Stanley gave us words for it. It's in his latest book. It's called undermining propaganda. It's it's an actual genre. It's a thing that gets done. Hey, that's my friend over there. How are you? Good. Are, are, is, is he is he trolling in the comments? Of course um, he is. My favorite. He's my child. My favorite. He's my child. My favorite. Um, so uh so that's that's one thing that I wanted to bring up because um, somebody tried to downplay uh, Mike Johnson, who was the dean of a law school that didn't open, named after a judge who just paid a uh, you know four hundred and fifty thousand dollars settlement for um, you know uh, related to a case where he had repeatedly um, been repeatedly a predator of of young men seven seven men came forward and said this has been and somebody tried to say well that happens you know after johnson was there this judge had 40 years of those of those charges and eyewitness accounts so it's like if you are going to go ahead and allow yourself to be you know representing somebody who's named after that as a lawyer he could have done a little bit of vetting but let's forget about paul pressler let's forget about the guy, this judge in Texas, and Johnson standing next to Trump and adjudicated sexual assaulter. So you don't even have to look far. They're right there. They're absolutely right there. And uh, maybe this would be a good time to show the clip, if you have it, of Michael McKay, the second one that I had you cut, the last one. It's short. He's a geopolitical analyst who was on our I show. Think, well, it's hard to know how to reach a person like that. But um, and he's speaking of Mike Johnson. Start by saying is you are not a Christian in any way. Uh, <laughs> since I'm trying to think of something that might get through to him, I'd say you're not a Christian in any way, um, and I. I don't know if I would have anything else to say. There's just so much lack of common ground and th there's not even a foundation of basic human decency that we share. Uh, so he's, he's, he was speaking of Mike Johnson, who of course has been, you know, in fealty to Trump holding up um, aid to Ukraine. Uh, my, so, Mike Johnson is one of the most brainwashed people I've ever seen. I mean, let's, let's be, clear about they they have turned this guy into a a little robot to destroy anything in his way right um how i mean how brainwashed do you have to be to deny who you are to allow yourself to go through conversion therapy and then not only pretend to not be who you are but then marry your conversion therapist to lock yourself in for the rest of your life join a cult who literally who has written down that they are taking over the world all of the world all of the things in the world to include the u.s government which he is supposed to protect Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, it, he's not a in my view a sort of conscious entity even worthy of of scorn at this point right he is an obvious uh element of a much larger plan he had some of his own ideas at the very beginning. If you remember, he said a couple of things about Ukraine that were like, well, yeah, hold on. And then he got the memo. Mm -hmm. 
he got God's word from whoever texted him saying, dude, that's a fucking red line. Ukraine is the only thing that matters. All this other shit, you don't do a, a border deal. You don't actually take care of any of the things that you're complaining about because we're using that. Get it through your head, little soldier. And he did. And he's just going to do exactly what they tell him to do until they until they get somebody worse. It's, it's, right? it's, it's like such they did last time with fucking McCarthy. Right, we celebrated because we we got we got a budget deal, but everything except wow. Ukraine. Remember that shit? Yeah. And McCarthy was like, "Here's ten shit burgers," and and then right at the end, he was like, "Ah, oh, I'll take nine of these back." And we we're like, "Yay, we're only eating one shit burger," and it was the only one they cared about, right? Which was Ukraine. Yeah. Why? Because this entire thing is is a part of a of a conspiracy of criminals who are um being funded and um led by black men it's that it's just that simple and, so and I that that uh and i'm landing no, no 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 that miles um had the goddamn balls uh to say that out I actually preferred Cajones. I'm going to take that from you. Cajones is really good. Um, yeah, I'm glad you bring up the cult dynamics because the ministry where Johnson met the non-adopted 14-year-old, then 14-year-old, um, more and more that I'm learning about this ministry with all of its allegations of sexual assaults, uh, it's more and more sounding like a cult. So I, I think that that's um, right on. Um, so, but here, here's, here's the last thing I wanted to bring up on, on your initial Ted talk. You said somewhere around six months ago, maybe it's already been a year that it's all out in the open and that the fifth column in the U S which sort of did a little bit of a cloak and dagger act with Russia, they are no longer doing that. Now we've seen it with Tucker Carlson and his fealty to Putin. Obviously we've been seeing it with Flynn over and over again. Um, we've seen it with Bannon, all the, all the people I write about, the monsters. Can we please bring up what Bannon spoke about? I think it was today or certainly within the last 24 hours. Because as we talk about this, which is so obvious to those of us who do this work, the obvious question is, we see it, we, we see the fifth column, we see it's all out in the open. What are our departments doing that are supposed to protect us from traitors and yeah. and and uh I, I saw a clip where where uh that biden campaign headquarters uh tweeted about uh steve bannon saying that he's going to imprison um all of the all of the democrats and political opponents and he was like yes i am going to put you in prison i am going to be in the administration i'm going to put you in prison um yes and and i i, I quote to it i was like okay thanks for pointing this out but why don't you fucking help <laughs> right the so. the language the the uh, this is an insurgency same crap that Mike Flynn was saying, the same crap we've been telling people for God, what Flynn three said it now, in four, 2016. Five? He said, This is an insurgency, folks. This is irregular warfare at its finest. Irregular warfare, for those who don't know, is a real is a thing that's defined in US doctrine, US military doctrine. And irregular war is defined as a violent struggle between state and non-state actors for influence and control of a population. That sound familiar? You said you you see any non-state out uh, actors out there trying to uh, cause a violent struggle uh, in order to uh, influence population? Who could so, it be? So, so Flynn again. I'm going to quote again because I have this shit memorized. As a general, as a retired general, this was an insurgency, folks. This was irregular warfare at its finest. A violent struggle 
between state and non-state actors. I will, I will, I will beg of you to, for a moment, think about some images from January sixth, and consider whether that seems like an insurgency, a, a violent struggle between state and non-state actors. I don't know if any of that rings a bell, uh, but it should. I would very okay. much, yeah. I would very I, much. Sorry. You, you. No, I. This is a beautiful place if we have it to run the first clip that I asked you to clip from Michael McKay. He's been documenting the war in Ukraine for ten years. He lived there for a time. He also, uh, you know, s studies this stuff. And every single day, you can follow his feed at um, at Michael he, McKay. Yeah. May I say one thing? Yeah. He, he gave uh, my favorite quote. That's what we're going to play. Wait, so, okay, here's my favorite. What mystifies me is that our intelligence services can warn Putin ahead of time that a terrorist attack was, was happening on his soil, but they refuse to warn Americans that we're being attacked by Putin's information war. All day, every single day, I track it constantly. Yeah. And, and I'm... And I know it's not necessarily, you know, your expertise, but I'm very curious what your thoughts are about why our government, our intelligence community, our military refuses to recognize this threat for what it is, um, which is a, a very deeply dangerous, subversive psychological warfare campaign that has, in my view, captured somewhere around the, a third of the country. And, and I don't understand why we haven't warned, explained, or pushed back in any way on this, at least in my yeah. view. Well, I, um, I, I don't know it in as much detail as you are. It's not my particular focus and so I But I can't help but look at it in a, in a broader perspective. I've, um, as in my... In my life, I, I've grown to admire so much about the United States, and, and one of them is how the United States has managed to um, successfully institutionalize ideas about liberty and and so on, and build a enduring uh, democratic institutions to sustain that, and that's been incredibly admirable, and a kind of ingrained tolerance, things like freedom of speech and so on. But the consequence of that is the United States has historically been really bad at dealing with actual treason. <laughs> it's it's, uh, all, it's I, always good, it's I, always I good. I cracked up after that, because that shit was like, oh yeah, and that's pretty much fucking, you know, like for some reason, right? We're we're willing to go after people for lying to the FBI and and fucking taxes and all of this shit. But if they actually collude together to overtly try to overthrow the fucking government, we're stymied about what to fucking do about it. I'll give you an example. Here's a good news, bad news situation. John Eastman, who wrote down on a piece of paper and then distributed all the fuck over the place a plan to overthrow the government. Now, he got a little bit of account a tiny bit, a tiny bit of accountability today. He got his law license taken away. He got disbarred. Now, for a lawyer, that's a big deal. That's your that's your career. Okay. But the motherfucker in, in and I'm not suggesting this, but in the olden days, they would do something Ugly with that motherfucker. They'd be like, wait, you're trying to overthrow the government. We got a plan for you. And it wouldn't be taking this fucking law license away. So, so you know, uh, again, I'm not saying let's go back to fucking vigilante days. But I am saying there's somewhere in between like, oh, let's, let's, take, let's take away his law license. And putting the motherfucker in jail for the rest of his life for trying to overthrow his own government. Meanwhile, Sam Bankman-Fried got 25 years in prison today. 
But he ripped uh, off rich people. So, uh, oh, but, oh, and he well, caused some suicides. Did, did, it took, it took a year. Took didn't a year. he also plead guilty, though? I, didn't he? It wasn't like he was doing the delay, the delay, the delay that, you know, Trump is so expert at. Uh, I don't there, remember there, if he pled or not, but I do know that at his sentencing, his attorneys tried to hold him up as a dazzling intellect uh, with autism whose mannerisms were off-putting, but he's an unknown puzzle, mm. a, a story yet to be told. That is some bullshit. The guy is a sociopath who stole from a bunch of people, wasted their money on whatever he wanted because he had some I'm better than everybody else idea going on. So and he, he was backed up. Go ahead. Now, now you can hit the button. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. So the PayPal yeah. mafia has this whole LARP, this whole whole thing that they called effective altruism and some other like long term. Tesquial is yes, yeah. but, yeah. but but specifically with Bankman, it was effective altruism and long termism. And this is basically the idea that oh, you pampered fucking privileged Silicon Valley dork are so much smarter and better and more genetically amazing than anybody else in the world that you should should at all costs collect as much money as possible so that you, in your infinite fucking wisdom, can spend the money better than the poors. Mm -hmm. That it's literally an entire oh. wing of libertarian sort of PayPal mafia techno bro fucking um, ideology, long termism, effective altruism. Look them up. Both embraced by Bankman Fried, who was embraced by Elon fucking Musk in public a lot over and over again. Gave him millions of dollars. Because these people believe this shit. These are, the, to, to Hi-Fi's point, you have to be a sociopath in order to buy into this, right? You have got to be a narcissist to the point that you feel that you can play God with other people. And by God, I mean this literally, because the... the uh, Bankman Fried was just taking people's money and he was going to make a big Bitcoin fantasy land or whatever. Elon Musk, his long term idea is that we must be multi planetary. Okay, and this, uh, briefly, but it's important. He believes, according to his quasi religion, Russian cosmism, that human beings must be multi planetary. And he's bought into this very deeply. And so that's his whole LARP. With, that's his whole thing about going to Mars. He's combined his apartheid, his white supremacy, his darkest Nazi shit with this long termism idea where he's actually doing good for the world by pushing this eugenics and white supremacy and have more babies and fucking, you know, invasions coming over the southern border. He has it in his head that he's doing good for the world because it's going to push us all to Mars. So that, that and, and in the process, he's getting people killed. He's trying to overthrow the country. He's got, he, he has created a $44 billion PSYOPs cannon to overthrow the motherfucking country. Because of the same bullshit, the same mental damage that Sam, Sam Bankman Freed had, which caused him to take a bunch of money from rich people, which, you know, immediately got him in the pokey. Isn't that interesting, though? He, get, he, he gets immediately put in the pokey, and, and he's not, he didn't go anywhere from day one. They're so like, oh. 
criminal or putting you in jail. No, you can't go out. A, a lot of this stuff to those who haven't been following us for the last three years will sound super out there, but it's all documented. And Hi-Fi, how long have you been saying that Elon you Musk is a problem? Right now, is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is people hear this stuff about Mars, they hear it all, and it's like, it's all documented. And Hi-Fi, how long have you been saying Elon Musk is a fucking problem? You were saying it when people still thought he was a wonder boy. years. Yeah. yeah. So we, 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 we he said, he said it So let me ask you something, though. We know that these guys continually are getting their government contracts re-upped. So is it just like a a too big to fail situation? Is there a uh, somebody who's like down with all of this uh, Mm. maniacal stuff? Or is it no, no, no one wants egg on their face to admit that they've done something wrong? What's your son's opinion, High Fidelity? Oh, we've discussed this, and actually we've discussed how American institutions have been infiltrated by bad actors, Mm -hmm. by pedophiles, by evil people who would use religion for their own ends, Um, and how it's a wicked, wicked world out there, but you got to stay true, and uh, yeah. (laughs) And now he wants me to plug his channel, which he hasn't actually created yet. Well, tell him that tell him that we will um so uh it's always fun to get interrupted by like uh, puppies and kids you know um so uh we have a clip from zarina zabriskie and paul conroy i hope they were reporting from herson it was um those of you who follow our show will know that the entire country of ukraine was bombed over the weekend while everybody was looking over you know to moscow and while everybody was looking over there Putin's war of annihilation ramped up and uh, we talk about that a bit, but we also talk about something that this show always reminds you about. We are dealing with a battle for our minds and that has to be something we always put at the forefront of everything we do. So with that, do we have anything high fidelity or am I just What is important for us here reporting from Ukraine is at the end of the day, Putin is blaming Ukraine for pretty much anything that happens yeah. and promises revenge. And that's what we need to know here. Thank you so much for that, Serena. I think it's really important that um, we are gonna continue to see horror events, both staged and real. And that it's it's like you wrote to me earlier that you're gonna see Putin's new level of aggression post-election, post Navalny's murder, and now post the terrorist attack. And that is what I really want to emphasize to our viewers, that while, while the world may look over here or look over there, Putin continues to uh, wage this war of annihilation um, in Ukraine. Yeah, and, and the biggest defense against that is keeping the focus on what's happening in Ukraine, you know, and not Perfect. allowing the narrative to, be, to drift either side, you know, it's to remain laser-like on what happens because... You know, we're seeing we're seeing since the election, since Navalny, we're seeing massive ramp up of events. You know, we were told we were out somewhere yesterday doing a job. And on the way back, we found out that in the last in the last 24 hours that um, the Russians have increased the use of FPV attack drones in our region by up to 40 percent in one day. That is a massive escalation of, of, of attack drones swarming over the civilian areas. Uh, just to, to uh, point out that there was a huge terrorist attack on Ukraine's infrastructure mm-hmm. 12 hours before uh, the terror attack that happened um, in Moscow at, by the way, um, Trump's buddies fucking um, the same place where the 2013 uh, Miss Universe pageant was held. (coughs) Same exact theater. Um, 12 hours before Putin had executed a massive missile strike across the entire country all the way to the west in Lviv that took out a whole shitload of, of infrastructure 
um, including, um, you know, uh, shutting down all the power in Kharkiv where uh, Zarina is. Uh, I just wanted to 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 point out that often one thing. Kershaw. 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 Yeah, yes, but they're they're reporting on everything that's been happening because the whole country was hit. Yeah. And we talked about, um, you know, the the flying over Polish airspace. I mean, there is so much going on. And one of the things I'd like our viewers to know is Paul Conroy has been a an award winning the gentleman you just heard photojournalist for a really long time. And he was working with a war correspondent, Marie Colvin, who was hunted and killed um, while they were in Syria. And he remembers the moment when the world looked away from Syria. And he's basically telling us, do not look away from Ukraine. And we're begging you to not look away from Ukraine because that's exactly what Putin would like you to do. That's what the fifth column in America would like you to do. And it's important that we don't do that. Yeah. You know, you know what came out of Syria, right? When we started looking away, ISIS K. Yeah. ISIS, the, the ISIS in, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan, which executed the, the terror in Moscow, mm -hmm. um, was, was oddly, created in Syria um, uh, around in early 2015. Yeah. Um, and then they, you know, executed a whole bunch of the, their, their record of terror is, is quite interesting. Let's put, let's put it that way. There's, there's a, there's, there's a lot going on there. And um, uh, I, I think it, it is very true that the, the, horror that went on in Syria under Assad um, and the um, enabling that Putin did of those fucking atrocities has gone really under reported and underestimated in terms of the, the amount of, of damage yeah. that was done, not just to Syria, but the entire region. And I would have to say that that is part of active measures that we don't focus on things that we should focus on. Meanwhile, we're having bullshit culture wars about things that don't even really exist. So uh, high fidelity. Well, uh, uh, we talk about culture wars. They're still attacking birth control. They're still attacking women's reproductive rights here in America. Uh, of course, they're lying to women and saying, no, 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 we're not doing that. But in reality, they are. I think it's well covered. Well, um, let, let me pause for one second there, because let's just take a quick look at Alabama and just remind people that you can be a pro-choice candidate in Alabama and take out a Republican in 2024 America. That happened. That happened like yesterday. So I just want to remind people that, you know, most of America doesn't like their stupid wars, culture wars. Anyway, yes, Haifed, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I think we need to always celebrate the wins when they happen. And there have been quite a few wins. I mean, uh, you know, Eastman's losing his license. Clark's going to be disbarred, most likely. Uh, and, Donald and Trump has... One more, thing. Go ahead. One, one more thing about Eastman losing his license. Why it is important is that these guys are absolutely useless to their criminal friends once they no longer have the ability to practice law. So Giuliani uh, will know this, you know, uh, Sidney Powell. Ellen Wood, Sidney Powell. So, so it's like they, they no longer have any value to this criminal cabal. Anyway, you were saying. And then you have to wonder what's going to happen to them after they lose their value, uh, especially when the law comes for them. Because, you know, as we learned from from Lev Parnas, that he knew they were pushing Russian disinformation. Is this going to be we, your segue to your complete your complete? Art? No, you just, no, it's not ready right? for that. Okay, okay. No, it's not time for that. Okay. No, uh, but I do have I have I finally finished that art piece. I'll share it at the end of the show. Okay, but, good. Uh, it, it, it's it's got to be. I just okay. So as a technologist, again as a network guy, I look at okay, we've got ISIS K terrorists in Russia. 
how did they get there? It's not hard to follow there. They have to cross borders. They had to have ID. They had to, you know, they're on a camera on video somewhere and we can trace where they came from. Yeah. And who paid them? Who, who gave them money? Uh, you know, yeah, terrorism yeah, uh, is not a profit inducing business generally. Right. Okay. So enough about ISIS. Let's talk about the rest of the network. We just, you know, that have been exposed recently in Europe. Four years ago in the UK, we know the links to Cambridge Analytica. We know Peter Thiel, Facebook, Palantir. You know, we know Jack Dorsey in Twitter, and now it's Elon fucking Musk. Hell. Back, back to Cambridge Analytica in 2016. That was that was used in the warrior pack that helped get Mike Johnson into office, along with Clay Higgins. So Cambridge Analytica was used to some degree because Robert Mercer had funded that pack. And I just think that's an interesting data point when we talk about, well, <laughs> did it work or did it not? Well, it doesn't matter because as Dr. Charles Creel told us, an attempted murderer is still a criminal. So. Um, I, I will, I will um, repeat something that my friend Alva Johnson um, who used to work on the Trump campaign has pointed out, which is that the a guy named James Brower, who uh, wrote <laughs> the first Q drops, was the um, Trump campaign's uh, uh, liaison uh, to Cambridge Analytica and passed data back and forth between Cambridge and the Trump campaign. Um, was that fascinating? That that's a guy who worked uh, uh, at MAGA Three X, which is also the um, basically psyops um, shop um, that organized PizzaGate, that um, did Guccifer and WikiLeaks, and all of the all of the promoting of the literal Kremlin proxies that helped to steal the election. And it wasn't about to to your point earlier, Heidi. Yes, there were, there were, Ivan from St. Petersburg was there and he was clumsy about it, but there were lots and lots of Americans who were, who were taking Ivan's direction and turning it into actual influence. hundred percent. My pinned tweet on Betty Dangerous is my series on the 2016 election attack. I'm working on the fifth one now. It's so important that we do not look away and that we face what actually happened. We are not going to recover until we actually have some sort of truth and reconciliation on what happened in 2016, because all the same players are uh, attempting it again. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we've been talking about the fucking Supreme Court, um, you know, we, we're, we're in a situation where we've got a couple decades staring us in the face of enemy combatants in the fucking Supreme Court. Literally, I mean, you know, I mean, Amy Coney Barrett's in a cult that where she has to follow five uh, coordinators, is what they're called. And they're five yeah. old white men that run people of praise. And she is, she is devoted to them, not the fucking Constitution. And she was put in at a super spreader. Remember? A fucking super spreader three weeks before the fucking election. I do remember that. And 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 remember Merrick Garland who who would have been who would have been a fine Supreme Court justice. Yeah. He could sit there and he could needle daddle and be a centrist and do all of his norms and it would have been perfectly appropriate. Mm -hmm. Not appropriate as a fucking attorney general, but that's mm -hmm. a side note. The point being that until we recognize that all the shit that came down out of that, out of that poison tree that came out of a person whose job was to cause damage to the United States of America, until we recognize that, we're not gonna be able to grab with the scale of, of what's in front of us. It's why we're fucking deer in the headlight, is because there hasn't been anybody like Miles for eight fucking years to have the balls to say, this is what's happening, this is why people yeah. are acting the way that they're acting, and this is what we could do about it. Mm -hmm. Arrest and if, my 
It's the what we can do about it that's so important. It's, I, I had to get it well, well, well done, Jim. There's many things that we can do about it. Uh, we need to um, still be a democracy after November in order to do the things that we need to do. Deep structural reforms, including the Supreme Court. Um, high fidelity. Well, we've hit the hour mark. Hey, thanks, Jen. We've hit the hour mark. Thank and, you, Jen. Uh, I think it's time to bring it to a close. But uh, so I yeah. finally finished. That's right. I have finally finished that damn Get, piece of art. It is It is out of my head. It has stopped Get, plaguing me. And this will be the last yeah. time I speak Get of there. it ever again. Here it is. Smoking gun coming out of Russia. The Lev Parnas Get Down Remix. <laughs> Russia and Russian aid. Russia and Russian aid. Source and one source only. Russia and Russian aid. False information spread by the Kremlin. Russia and Russian aid. False information spread by the Kremlin. Russia and Russian aid. False information spread by the Kremlin. They were sharing lies. Trump and Giuliani were sharing lies. Trump and Giuliani. They were sharing lies. They were sharing lies. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Russia and Russian aid, Donald Trump. They were sharing lies. Manipulate the public, Vladimir Putin. Manipulate the public, Vladimir Putin. Manipulate the public, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin. I will be silenced no longer. Vladimir Putin. Manipulate the public, Donald Trump. Manipulate the public. Did you ever find the smoking gun? Vladimir Putin coming out of Russia. Did you ever find the smoking gun? Donald Trump coming out of Russia. Did you ever find the smoking gun? Well, why should be investigated? My arrest was set up strictly to shut me up. Why should be investigated? Why was trying to save Donald Trump? No, why should be investigated? Did you ever find the smoking gun? Vladimir Putin coming out of Russia. Donald Trump coming out of Russia. Rudy Giuliani coming out of Russia. John Hannity coming out of Russia. John Solomon coming out of Russia. Us coming out of Russia. Propaganda and disinformation coming out of Russia. Coming out of Russia. Did you ever find the smoking gun? Coming out of Russia. Coming out of Russia. Media personality coming out of Russia. Senator Ron Johnson coming out of Russia. Coming out of Russia. Congressman Pete Sessions coming out of Russia, coming out of Russia. Freak out, yo! I will be silenced no longer. Did you ever find the smoking gun? Coming out of Russia. Get down, down.